If I could be the commissioner of the NFL for one day and create a rule that could not be undone, it would be that during every single kickoff, a random person in the stands has to come down and play on the kicking team. You make the tackle, you win a million dollars. If you don't, whatever happens, happens. You lose a body part, that's on you. As with so many things in life, watching from the sidelines does not mean you understand what's happening. And if some overconfident suburban dad gets carted off the field on a stretcher after every kickoff, I think America might learn something. Back when I worked in New York, Eli Manning was the quarterback of the New York Giants. And during football season, I would ride the train home at night from the city and have to listen to some armchair football expert talk about how much Eli sucked, which struck me as badly misinformed. Because from what I could see, Eli Manning was a fantastically hardworking, studious, talented young guy who was uniquely impervious to pressure. Can you imagine the jet exhaust of criticism you get as the quarterback of the New York Giants? Well, he was a monument to mental toughness in the face of criticism. Criticism for people who don't know anything about what it takes to do his job. And in those years when loudly stupid people on the train were tearing him down, yeah, he won two Super Bowls for them against Tom Brady. So there's a Bertrand Russell quote that says the whole problem with the world is that fools and fanatics are always so certain of themselves and wiser people are always so full of doubts. Well, I won a lot of money betting on Eli Manning in the Super Bowl. But to be fair, I wasn't, I wasn't really betting on Eli. I was betting against loud fools. And that seemed like a sure thing.